The rise of dupe culture has left me thinking a lot about luxury makeup and even asking myself the question, does luxury exist anymore? Because by definition, luxury is not just a price point. Luxury is a lot more all encompassing. It is an experience. It is an experience that comes at a high price point, but the price point is not what makes something luxury. But I would argue in the beauty space, we've almost redefined luxury to exclusively define that price point while eliminating the actual experience for the consumer. To me, it feels like there's a very fine line between products that are drugstore and products that are high end. And I wanna dive into this a bit more today in my makeup musing series. Okay, as always, I will leave the products linked down below because we probably won't be touching too much on the individual products here, but I am gonna start with my Fenty Ease Drop Foundation. I'm wearing the shade three. Now, Marian Webster defines luxury as a condition of abundance or great ease and comfort. And in my eyes, those words ease and comfort play a big role in luxury, okay? And I say this as someone that used to work in luxury automotive, and that was a big, emphasis in our training that luxury is an experience. You know, you're providing this very top tier, high end white glove service. And that's part of what makes luxury luxury. It's not just the increased quality of the materials. It's not just the product, the look of it, it's the experience. And even if the product might be similar to other things on the market, the experience is a major factor in making this luxury. So kind of sticking with the idea of automotive, I'll use the example of Chevrolet and Cadillac, okay? You can go out and buy a Chevy or you can buy a Cadillac. Similar vehicles, obviously there are going to be differences between them in terms of the features, the trims, blah, blah, blah. But these two vehicles will be made on the same platform and there will be a lot of carryover between the two. But what makes the Cadillac luxury, even though it looks pretty similar to the Chevy, Again, partially the trim and those other factors, but it's the experience that the shopper will receive. It will be a lot more hands-on. You know, maybe when you need to get your oil changed, they'll come to your house and pick it up. Like it's going to be a different experience for the shopper. And that's part of what is being, that's part of what you're paying for when you're buying luxury. Now I put that in air quotes because I feel like we've kind of lost the idea of experience when it comes to luxury in beauty. Okay, going in with the Tower 28 concealer, um, I do always list my shades down below as well. So I always list the product, but I also list my shades. So if you're ever wondering what I'm wearing, you can always check in the description box, but this is the shade DTLA. And I was reading an article from Business of Fashion that they posted last fall. And the article is titled, Queuing is not a luxury experience. And they were really diving into the rise in lines outside of luxury stores. So let's say you wanna go buy a new luxury purse. Post pandemic, you will probably be met with a line outside the store and you will have to wait to go in. And in the article, they noted one of the most frustrating things about shopping for luxury fashion is queuing or lining up. The default experience at luxury brands is increasingly arriving at a store and being told by someone with an iPad that you must wait outside, often behind scores of other people before you're allowed in to have a look. And while that article is more so referencing fashion, I think it also highlights a lot of experiences we're observing in beauty as well. And I have a few theories as to why it feels like luxury doesn't really exist anymore in the beauty space. And the first one is actually the rise in these giant makeup retailers like Ulta and Sephora. And, you know, we could really argue that Ulta and Sephora have kind of like killed off the traditional makeup counter. Now, before I get into this, let me just say I love Ulta. I love Sephora. So this is not intended to be any sort of a critique of these retailers as much as it is an observation and a conversation about the shift in the consumer experience. Okay. But... You know, if we look at Sephora specifically, they were founded in 1970 and they made their way into the U.S. in 1998. And, you know, I'm speaking from a U.S. perspective because that's where I live. So I'll also be talking about Ulta because we have Ulta here. And I was watching a video from the Wall Street Journal and it's in their series, The Economics of Blank. And they do these videos about a ton of different companies. And they did one about Sephora 
And a concept they really heavily highlighted in that video was the shift that Sephora made from the more traditional beauty shopping experience to a more self-service one. So when we think about the counters, which I mean do still exist, don't get me wrong, but when we think about the original counter beauty shopping experience, the Wall Street Journal defined that as a service-based retail model. And they have defined the experience at Sephora as a assisted self-service based model. And I think that is quite accurate, especially when you consider that going into a traditional counter, you'll be met with someone that's gonna walk you through every step. These products are behind the counter, hence the name counter, and you'll be very assisted from the beginning to the end. Now, some people might like that experience, some people might not, and that's where Sephora comes into play, where you're still receiving elements of that service, but it's a bit more of a self-serve environment. If you need help, they're there to provide it. If you have questions, if you need recommendations, if you need a different shade, if you need something from the back, there are beauty advisors there to help you, but they won't necessarily be walking you through the process every step of the way in the type of service you might receive at a counter. And Ulta exists under a pretty similar model as well. So Ulta was founded in 1990 and and as I was prepping for this video, I found something kind of interesting about Ulta that I didn't realize before, so I wanted to share it. The original name for the retailer was actually Ulta 3, and then they subsequently dropped the 3, but I found an article actually from the Chicago Tribune. This article was published in 1995, and they noted that the name Ulta 3 was a condensed version of Ultimate Beauty Store, like that's what that kind of stands for. And then the three was initially intended to represent their three main features, fragrance, cosmetics, and salon. And then later on, they adjusted that three to actually then explain their other three features, which they call selection, savings, and service. But Ulta specifically was actually started by um, some execs from Osco Drug, and they wanted to start a discount cosmetic store. And that same Chicago Tribune article said, the markup is very, very high, referring to cosmetics, and people today know what they like and what they want, so there's less need for an intermediary like a sales clerk at a counter. So there you have it. Ulta was kind of founded on that same principle that they will have people in the store to help you out, but overall the experience will still be rather individual. The article also noted that Ulta's aisles featured open shelves for easy access to avoid the traditional department store practice of locking items behind glass cases. They also noted that Ulta employees do not work on commission, another big difference between more traditional counter service for beauty. And now to reiterate, I don't necessarily think one model is better or worse than another. I think there are pros and cons to both, but something that I find really unique about this discussion is that even though the more hands-on experience has been eliminated, the cost is still the same for the consumer. And I think Ulta is where this stands out the most because Ulta carries a very wide range of price points. You have your very inexpensive drugstore price point brands, and then they have luxury brands like Dior and Chanel. In the same store, I mean, they're on opposite sides, but in the same shopping trip, you could buy a $5 mascara from Essence or a $70 foundation from Chanel. And regardless of which product you purchase and what price point you are spending at, your user experience will look the exact same. You know, you will go into the store on your own, you will pick it out, maybe get some help if you, um, if you ask for it, but then you will go stand in line next to everyone else. And again, regardless of whether you bought the $5 mascara or the $70 foundation, they're gonna throw it in an orange plastic bag. Your shopping experience will look the same regardless of the price point of the product. I think it's kind of a harder sell to get a consumer to buy such an expensive product when the formulation is not gonna be significantly better than its more affordable counterparts. I mean, and I'm not even just speaking drugstore, I'm talking about other prestige brands that are simply priced lower. And while we're talking about the consumer experience, it's actually entirely different whether you're purchasing from a retailer like Ulta or Sephora, or you're buying directly. So I'll use the example of Dior. One of my friends is a creator and she specializes in luxury content. Her name is Steffi in the city, and she has a ton of unboxings on TikTok. And she has quite a few unboxing like Dior makeup products. 
and she will showcase all of the freebies that Dior sends with her products. She will showcase the way that the product is wrapped, the, the presentation there, okay? Now, for the user, if you were to go buy a Dior lip oil at Ulta, you buy it online, they're gonna ship it to you in a brown cardboard box, sometimes a bag, sometimes do a bag, but they're gonna put it in a brown cardboard box with some brown paper on the inside. And your little Dior lip oil is gonna be just thrown in there in the little brown box and they're gonna ship it to you. If you buy that same, that exact same lip oil, same price, same everything, you buy it directly from Dior, they're going to send it to you wrapped up. They're gonna send it to you with tissue paper. They're gonna throw in free samples. You might get a makeup bag. You might get this, that, depending on like what they're running at the time. The experience is gonna be so different even if you're paying the same price point. And I think it's really fascinating to watch retailers like Ulta and Sephora sell from these luxury brands when the consumer is still paying the luxury price point but not receiving a luxury experience. You could go to Sephora and buy Le Mer. You could be buying your like multi-hundred dollar products and you will be receiving this product, same formula, same everything, but you're not getting a luxury experience as a shopper, even though you're being charged for it. I have been on this bronzer for so long, and at this point, it's actually not even looking great. I've said this a million times. Whenever I do my makeup on camera, I hate the way it looks because I will get so into what I'm telling you, I will just be messing up my face. And I'm supposed to go to dinner with my friend later, so I don't, I'm, I'm like, girl, pay attention. Don't mess this up. Okay, but reason number two that I can really point to for kind of the, the death of luxury makeup, if you will. That's very dramatic, but reason number two is the rise in online shopping, okay? Of course. The existence of the internet and e-commerce has completely shifted the way that consumers shop for makeup for everything. And in a lot of ways, online shopping has really simplified the experience for the consumer. You don't need to get in your car or walk or take the train or whatever mode of transportation you use, you don't need to get and go to the store to obtain your products. They can be sent right to you. And with a lot of services, they can be sent to you same day or next day or in a very, very fast time frame. But while the user experience has been very simplified, we've definitely eliminated any possibility for luxury in this experience, okay? I mean, that's not to say it doesn't happen and it can't happen, but in general, it's a lot harder to provide a luxury experience when the person is not coming into your store. Okay, this, by the way, I don't even know if they still make this, if I'm being honest. This is the Born This Way powder from Too Faced. I'm actually so close to being done with this. I've had this, obviously, forever. But let's talk numbers briefly here, okay? I found an article from McKinsey, which is a consulting firm, and they noticed, noted that e-commerce and beauty nearly quadrupled between 2015 and 2022. And its share now exceeds 20% of all shopping happening online and beauty. And granted, that is not a super up-to-date number considering the fact that I just referenced the year 2022 and we are now in 2024. But I think that really highlights the explosion we have observed in online shopping. And, you know, referencing Sephora specifically, they are the second largest beauty online beauty retailer in the world behind Chinese retailer Tamal. And again, it's a lot harder to provide that experience online. You know, no one's gonna be handing you like champagne while you're shopping and showing you all the products. You know, you're doing it online. That means the consumer experience now looks entirely different. Okay, we're testing this out for the first time. This is the new Halo palette. This one came to me in PR, it's from Smashbox. This is the Back to Cali palette. So they have four shades of this. So I already have on some cream bronzer, but we'll still do a little bit more bronzer. Like I said, the cream bronzer's not looking great, but that's not the bronzer's fault. That is my fault. That was 100% user error. I was just too focused on talking, but let's, we'll start with the bronzer. And then I think maybe we'll do like a combo of the two blushes, you know, we'll try it, we'll see. But I think it's also really relevant to note the way that people shop these days and how much technology has influenced it. So I would argue there's not even as much, as much of a need to have that very hands-on um, shopping experience when it comes to cosmetics, in part due to online makeup reviews, okay? So think YouTube, Instagram, TikTok. You can find a video of any product that you wanna buy. You can find a video of someone swatching every single shade of it, someone walking you through the pros and the cons of the product. And overall, a lot of that experience that you used to receive in store, maybe one-on-one -on -one with someone at a counter, 
you can now receive online through someone reviewing the product. And even if we like go back in time a little bit before we had so many product reviews on the internet before some of these social media sites even existed, there was still a form of online reviews when it came to makeup. You know, I remember being a frequent visitor of, was it Makeup Alley? And like reading the reviews on there of every single product and like really looking into a product before purchasing it. And not only has technology kind of eliminated somewhat, somewhat of the need to go in and talk to someone in person, but it's also, again, allowed people to buy these things online. They don't feel as much of a need to go into the store and swatch the product. They're able to find a video of someone else swatching them for them. Okay, first thoughts on the palette. Um, I feel like I've really built up the bronzer to show as much as it is currently. So I'm feeling like at least the bronzer shade so far is a little more sheer than I'm used to. But personally, I enjoy that because I like something that I can kind of build at my own pace. But I want to note that just in case you are looking for something with more pigment. It's less pigmented than I was expecting. But let's take, uh, I want to mix them, but I kind of just want to use this one. Let's take this shade and use this as the blush. Ooh, see, this one looks like it has way more pigment to it, actually. Let me tap that off, we'll see. We'll see, you know, definitely a first impression. As always, I will get back to you with more thoughts, but the, the, oh, here I am saying not that pigmented, and then look what I just did. I knew, I knew this was gonna happen. Maybe that doesn't look so bad. Maybe I'm being dramatic, we'll blend it out. But um, the next reason, the obvious one, is that the drugstore is just better now, okay? So when I think of, the years that I was first getting into makeup, there was a considerable difference in quality when you look at price point. Like drugstore makeup was not great, okay? It was like, you could find drugstore makeup that was good, but there was a very clear difference when it came to price point. You know, there was a noticeable difference between something you would buy at the drugstore and something you would buy at a counter. And these days, the line is very blurred. I have plenty of drugstore products that are better than my high-end products, you know? If you were to do like a blind test of a bunch of products, you wouldn't necessarily know the price point of the products based on um, the wear and the experience of them. The difference is almost kind of in the packaging, but even with that, Drugstore packaging is getting better and better. Can you take me seriously right now with my blush? Like I can see it in the viewfinder and we've got to, we've got to fix this. This is what I get for saying, oh, it's not that, it's not that pigmented. And now, now look at me. But even with the idea of packaging, like I remember products back in the day would kind of, it would almost fall apart right away. Like you would, it was very, very cheap plastic packaging. It would crack. It would kind of break at the hinge very easily, but now a drugstore product sometimes come in identical packaging to high-end products. You know, this is the new Catrice dupe of the um, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. It's very, very, very similar to the e.l.f. one. And even like I will say, going to this Smashbox palette, this, aside from the weight of it, if you would have shown me this palette with this packaging, this feels drugstore to me. Like, I don't think there's much of a range anymore, even in packaging. Like, there is, but not as much as there used to be, you know? I look at this, and it's plastic. It's heavy plastic, but... And then you have a sticker on the front that says Smashbox. Like, this doesn't feel that luxe to me. It doesn't feel considerably more luxurious than a product that would be a fourth of the price point. You know, there's really not the range that we used to see. Now, to be clear, I do own luxury products. I still buy luxury products. I'm not anti-luxury. I have some favorites that are luxury products, and I have luxury products that I think are better quality than more inexpensive options on the market. So there's obviously still a time and a place, but I think the line is becoming very blurred between drugstore and luxury and there is significantly less distinction between price points than there was a few decades ago. I never do highlight, but I feel like I need to use this one just to kind of like get some thoughts on this. So we'll use this one today. I'm nervous it's gonna be a little too dark for me. So I'll use a light hand. <gasps> That's too dark for me. It's a pretty highlight for sure. When I turn my head, you're like, oh, it looks nice, but it's a little too deep for me. But in the conversation about drugstore products, I think it's also important to point out the fact that 
the increased quality we've observed at the drugstore has come at a price increase as well. You know, drugstore doesn't drugstore anymore. These products are consistently above $10. Like we've seen drugstore products above $20 these days. So once again, there's really just like less of a line there. It's very, very blurred. But I think another pro to drugstore when you compare it to these luxury brands and a lot of these drugstore products that are duping the luxury brands, the drugstore is not only making it more affordable, but they're making it more accessible because, well, partially accessible in the price point, but also in terms of the shade range. Luxury brands have historically carried horrible shade ranges. Like I'm talking like you look at the shade range for a luxury foundation, there isn't one, okay? It's like, it's, there's nothing. And then when the drugstore is kind of duping these products, they're making it better and they're making it available to so many more people, partially through the price point, but also through the shade range. Again, it kind of brings me back to the idea of, you know, what is the consumer paying for with luxury? And part of the kind of inspiration for this video came out of the comments in my Charlotte Tilbury Elf video, you know, the more the most recent video I did in Makeup Musings. And I talked about the call out that Charlotte Tilbury did on Elf for duping them. I'll have that video linked if you have not seen it. But comments were really interesting and it was fascinating to kind of read from viewers about their experience shopping from luxury brands like Charlotte Tilbury. But the comments on that Charlotte Tilbury video, so many people were saying, you know, why would I buy the Charlotte Tilbury product when the e.l.f. product is essentially identical? And I could do an entire separate video on dupes and the ethics of dupes, and I know there are a lot of opinions on them, but for these brands moving forward, I see this being a really big pain point for prestige and luxury brands with the rise of elves. Not me associating elf so much with dupes that I just combined the words dupe and elf, <laughs> but with the rise of dupes. Um, the, the dupification of beauty, if you will. That's, that's, that's what I'm calling it. That's, that's what I'm, I've coined this. <laughs> okay, this, another new product we are testing. So excited about this. This is the new chocolatey brown tubing mascara that Rudy Berry did in collaboration with Bubel. So, this is my first time trying it. I'm so excited. You know I've been on the hunt for the perfect chocolate brown mascara that's actually a chocolatey brown. We'll see how brown this is on camera because sometimes I feel like when I sit under my lights, I can't always tell. And then I've like watched footage back before and I've thought, oh, that actually does totally look brown. I'll tell you what though, look how long my eyelashes look. <laughs> now we're probably far too into this video for me to be making a disclaimer now, but I want to make it clear that this is by no means a judgment on anyone that enjoys luxury makeup or products in general. I understand why someone would want beautiful things. I love beautiful things. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. This is more so intended to be a conversation and I want to kind of open up a dialogue, but okay. I need to put some brow gel in before I forget. When I was coming back from my trip, my perfume leaked like just a tiny bit in my makeup bag, but now everything, including this brow gel, smells great actually. Also, I feel like the highlight, while I still think it's a little too dark, it's kind of all like morphed together now and my cheek just looks really pretty and glowy. I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna get back into highlight, we'll see. For lip liner, this is Cappuccino from Rimmel, but I'm using a very light hand and just kind of feathering it in to get a soft look. Okay, that is pretty. I'm going to just actually take my finger though and blur it a little bit. I love this shade, I love this shade so much. Now, you know how much I love my Milani Fruit Fetish Lip Oils. This is in the shade Honey Fig. Now again, I think there are pros and cons to every topic we talked about in this video, but it's left me asking the question, can luxury exist anymore? Or is the consumer being scammed when they're no longer being offered a luxury experience and the product they're purchasing is a comparable form to that that they could find at the drugstore, all while being charged considerable markups. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts down below. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll have my full makeup musings playlist linked and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.